Eric Hyden, superstar. And since there are all, only, I think, about four million people who speak Norwegian, I suspect there's going to be another book or two pretty soon. Here's Keith Jackson. Keith, you've now had the, the honor of covering the two greatest gold medal performances in Olympic history, Mark Spitz with his seven, and now Eric Hyden with his five. Must have been great out there. Very comparable. The performances of the two young men were just incredible. And this, this one may be the most exceptional athlete I've ever seen. I, I would certainly tend to go along with that. Why don't you review for us just a little bit exactly what happened out there? When they brought Mr. Grabeldinger, Nicholas Grabeldinger, in from Enzo to help them build the ice, they knew they were going to have a good facility, as you know, and you were here in 78 for the World Sprints. Right. And at that time, you could see the emergence of an Eric Hyden. You could see the right. confidence starting to grow. Uh, Beth, then in 79, had an extraordinary good fortune in the world and uh, perhaps became a bit of a victim of media oversell. And uh, then, of course, we saw the East Germans starting to develop slowly and, and uh, many things. I, the one thing that sort of uh, struck me, Jim, that uh, if Eric Haydn had not won the fifth medal, he might have been leaving town as a loser, Can you imagine that? as that may seem. Yeah. But that was sort of the opinion I had when it was done. But I think the American women did quite well. Leopoldus Muller, two silvers. That gives her three for her career. Beth got a bronze. Okay, well, that's what we're going to look at right now, I think, Keith, and you can tell us about it. First of all, the women's story in speed skating, traditionally the greatest sport for the United States in the Olympics, the Winter Olympics. Gaining speed, trying to fight back, time to beat, 41-7-8, Karen Inca, East Germany, coming down off the turn, the sprint to the finish line at the end of 500 meters. Watch the time ticking away, no. 42-26 for Leah Polis Muller and a 42-98 for the German girl. Both good times. And then Leah, apparently nearing the end of her serious international competition, was paired in the women's 1,000 with Natalia Petrosheva of the Soviet Union. She took another silver. Leah Polis Muller to the outside. It still appears that the Soviet woman has an edge. She does, coming down off the last turn. Petrashova has the lead over Leah Polis Muller. Watch the time as Petrashova breaks the beam at 124.10. Leah Polis Muller, 125.41. And they have both shattered the Olympic record. And uh, Petrashova getting very close to the world record. Then the final event for the women, 3,000 meters. Beth Hyden. She had a seventh, a seventh, and a fifth. But in the final event, she got a bronze medal. As Beth goes to the outer turn, Jensen tucks inside. Now it is spend everything you've got in the drive for the finish line. Inside, Jensen has a considerable margin on Hyden. Beth fighting back, driving for the finish line. It's going to be Jensen across first. 432-13 for Bjorgeva Jensen, 433-77 for Beth Hyden. They have absolutely destroyed the Olympic record and just missed the world record. Later, Miss Jensen apparently commented it appeared to her that Beth might have lost some of her fighting spirit at the press conference. The press asked Beth Hyden for a reaction. She answered this way. Well, I agree with her that I don't really have the same fighting spirit as she called it this year. Um, because when I go out there and skate, I like to skate for myself. And this year I've sort of had the feeling that I have to skate for the press, you know? And to hell with you guys, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's a little harder. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like feeling that I'm skating for somebody besides myself, so maybe I don't really put as much as myself into it. I don't know. It's important to keep physically fit. That's why I run on my lunch hours. But in times like these, it's also important to keep financially fit. That's why I put my savings in the credit union. On the average, credit unions pay a full half a percent more on regular savings than banks or savings and loans. And my money's insured by a government agency. To keep physically fit, I run. To keep financially fit, I depend on my credit union. Maybe you should too. Skating right now, we're doing 
a review of some of the great moments of these games coming up in just a minute here will be Eric Hyden, for example. And yes, we will be talking and looking at hockey before this is done. Then we're going to have what they call the prelude to the closing ceremonies with people like John Curry and Dorothy Hamill skating with Chuck Mangione, who wrote this special theme for ABC for these games, uh, playing his music. Then the closing ceremonies themselves. And right now we're talking with Keith Jackson, who had the privilege of covering all five gold medals of Eric Hyden. Why don't we go into the, the men's story right now, Keith? Eric Hyden, to me, is like a, a spring breeze off the top of the Rockies. He's totally unaffected, totally unimpressed, and is the happiest guy in town that the U.S. hockey team won today. He did have his party last night, but Lord knows, during the days preceding this, he's been marvelous. We have a package of his accomplishments with his own personal comments that uh, pretty well define what he had hoped to do, what he wanted to do, and we started our conversation with him about the men's 500, his first race. Okay. Well, for me, I was pretty nervous because it was the first race, but the nice thing was that I had a good pair uh, paired with world record holders. So went out there, and the biggest thing for me was just to concentrate on that last dinner turn and the way things worked out. I really got a uh, good last dinner, and that's where I came around and finally ended up beating him. That world record holder, Evgeny Kulikov of the Soviet Union. But Eric Hyden never really let him have a chance here. Now, Eric Hyden moving from the outside to the inner. Gives him a chance to set up the turn, right, Sheila? And that's so important so that he stays on that snow lane. And it looks like he did an excellent job of it. Hyden coming a little bit wide. He came wide on the inner lane. Eric Hyden has the lead as he crosses the finish line at 38.03. And so much for the Olympic record, 38.37 for Kulikov. Second race on the schedule was the 5,000, sort of a no man's land kind of race. I was kind of concerned, you know, after having skated the 500 to go into the 5,000 because it is a hard race. It's almost harder than a 10,000. Uh, but the thing was, I was a little bit more relaxed after skating one race, and I was looking forward to it. And luckily, I drew a good pair so that Oxholm was before me, and I knew what kind of time to go after. He skated with a veteran from Holland, Hilbert van der Duyen. Van der Duyen running a very respectable race, too, as he begins his final sprint. Eric, was at one lap to go, was a couple seconds faster than Oxholm, and I think that he's got a stronger last lap. Watch the clock. Watch the time. The time to beat, 7.05.59. He is not going to break seven minutes. 7.02.29 for Eric Hyden. That is a new Olympic record. Then the 1,000. An event where Eric owns the world record. <laughs> Things went really well there. Um, yeah, I have to remember about this race. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but um, I had a good pair. Um, nice thing was that I drew inner lane, and that's what I really like because after you start going, it's nice to have a full lap where you have both outer turns because it's hard to hold the inner turns. And uh, with Boucher, you know, I knew where I stood the whole time, and things worked out well. Um, didn't make any mistakes. Boucher being Gaetan Boucher of Canada. He was right there, gave good perspective to the race. Now working their way through the turn, heading down toward the back straight into the crossover. That's where the wind really buffets you at that end of the speed skating stadium. It's open and the wind really hits you. And Eric Hyden running well. Coming down off the turn on the inner. And here he comes. Powerful man driving across the finish line. The time is 1.15.18. That is a new Olympic record. The 1,500 was a spectacular. That's right. But again, I had a good pair, and I wasn't first first pair, so I um, knew the time to go after. Trouble was, uh, after I think it was about 600 meters, I stumbled a little bit. And I was surprised that I was able to keep going. It didn't really settle in my mind. And right away again, I was able to get on the pace and keep it going. And again, it went well. <laughs> he was paired with the veteran Sten Schemmet of Norway, another prime medal contender. And he helped keep Eric right on his pace. Eric Hyde had started on the honor. Skating the dinner right now, you can see that Sten Schemmet is right with him, and he almost fell down. He almost fell coming off that turn. That must have shaken him up an awful lot, and it's going to take a lot of 
concentration to try and get it all back together again. But he did and went on to win in an Olympic record time of 155.44. Then came the long, hard finale, the 10,000 meters. I wasn't sure how psyched up I would be to race, and um, I was really concerned after seeing Wood's times and Oxholm's times. I thought, all right, we're just going to have the American record, you know. But um, went out there, and the first few laps went pretty well. And after that, I just let it go, and uh, Diane was giving me the split times, let me knew where I was the whole time. And when you hear the timer say you're seven seconds ahead of Oxholm, that was great. <laughs> Oxholm being Tom, Eric Oxholm of Norway, generally considered by most people the man that Eric Hyden would have to beat. Well, he turned out to be plenty tough. Oxholm took the bronze medal at 14.36.60, but Eric Hyden, 14.28.13, a world record, an Olympic record, and a fifth gold Lamp medal. Time, Eric Hyden now owns two world records. He now owns all of the men's Olympic speed skating record, and he has become the only person ever to win five individual gold medals in any Olympic Games. What a guy he is. You know, Keith, uh, uh, I, I think I said earlier, he's an old-fashioned kind of hero, isn't he? The kind we used to read about in the boys' books. Hang around a drugstore, yeah. candy bar before supper, that kind of a kid, uh, but he has a massive appetite for training. You must have it to do what he has done. I think the biggest problem he faces now is to retain that stability that he's had all these years because the pressure will be enormous. He leaves tomorrow morning with the team for the World Championships in Heronveen, then on to the Golden Skate in Enzel, and then I suppose he's off to Norway to study sports medicine there for a year, but he insists that he will study sports medicine, that he will not become a commercial Olympic hero. And then we'll c come back here and become a doctor, right? That's what he says. Okay, the story of Eric Hyden reported by... Keith Jackson, who, as we said, has now reported the two greatest gold medal stories of all time. Uh, you know, Mark Spitz with his seven and Eric Hyden with his five. A great job as always, Keith. Thank you, Jim. And uh, coming up is, guess what, ice hockey. Let's see, what is this? A sign outside and good board the Golden Boys. You USA Hockey and Eric Hyden, that says it. And there was a tie between those two things. Mark Johnson and Eric Hyden, who played peewee hockey together. We're going to talk about hockey just as soon as we come back here with Al Michaels and Ken Dryden. Nobody wears a winter smile quite like you. There's winter magic in the air. You're trying something new. All over town, fun, candy bound. You're reaching for 